And we here we are. Hi everyone, Kevin Newall here. I'm here with uh, Anthony Wong. How's it going, Kevin? I'm doing great, thanks. Cool. Uh, so for everybody that's watching and for people that will be watching, uh, I'm here with Kevin, who is the uh, founder of SoHelpful.me, which is a fantastic tool. And uh, yeah, you want to give us kind of the elevator pitch on uh, the product? Well, I don't have an elevator pitch because I'm not trying to raise money. So <laughs> I will give you the lean. I'll give you the lean startup pitch. So the the lean startup pitch, which is a, which is a terrible pitch if you're going to raise money, um, is that I decided to spend the next 20 years uh, building products for entrepreneurs and basically to to build tools to help them to find more customers and build close relationships with them. And so Health Woman End is the first one that I'm working on and it allows you to uh, dynamically set up uh, calls like this interview potential customers to help them out over uh, Skype or Hangout so that you can build a better relationship with them. Yeah, uh, and right off the bat, So Helpful is a fantastic product. I highly recommend anybody that's uh, watching go give it a shot. Uh, I, just, I just absolutely love it. Thanks a lot. So, I appreciate that. So. Yeah. Uh, so maybe a little bit of background. When did uh, when did the uh, I guess the idea originate, and then uh, how long was it till the ball got rolling? Yeah. Well, the idea is still originating. Uh, so I'll give you the this again. You know, I have to apologize for the lean startup geek speak here. But anybody who reads any of my stuff know that I'm passionate about testing ideas. And so I I started with uh, at the end of 2012. I had moved to China. I'd been here a year. And I had I didn't know anybody like I I mean I knew a couple entrepreneurs in the area but I'm in Beijing so I'm in this strange world I'd spent six months studying Chinese and so I was effectively my social media was dead my blog was dead and I wanted to build products for entrepreneurs and I just wasn't meeting any of them uh, and so I decided to just make an offer I said you know what I'll help any entrepreneur in the world out for Skype or Hangout for for a half hour and I put my schedule up there and then I let them book calls with me and so I, I that's that's the way I started doing for myself. Um, and after a few months of doing that, I, you know, I, over time I learned how to promote myself, how to get people to find me, how to use the discussion to write better content. And then once I had, you know, I sort of done some of this work myself, I thought, you know what, there actually this, there might be a product here. This is working better for me than I had expected. So once I reached that point, then I actually went down and I did my customer development and spent about three months interviewing hundreds of people. Entrepreneurs, freelancers, uh, you know, service providers, small businesses around the world to figure out, you know, do you want, you know, are you interested in building your reputation, helping people one on one through this type of medium, um, and and so that's what started. And, I, and uh, then I started coding. I guess it was about April, sort of building the product. Uh, first test was would I use it if I built my own product, and I did, and I liked it. And then the question, the second test was, could I get Five or six other crazy people to use it, knowing that it was, you know, it was going to be a paid product, and you know, they they used it and they liked it, and I got to see that they were using it. And then since then, it's been about can I can I actually build out a, a you know a complex scheduling system and get people to start applying for it, and you know what what are the what are the needs? How do people want to use this? You know what is the and I'm still in that discovery phase right now. Yeah, for sure. I I think uh, I I think imagining just kind of the possibilities of like a product like this is kind of like spectacular, um, and especially kind of in the startup space, I feel like there's such a collaborative uh, element, and people are always really open to helping. So this seems definitely like you know a really great tool for that. Yeah, it's it's thanks. So it's like when you're starting off with these kind of SaaS based products, like communicating the value proposition to the right people is always tough, and it just takes a long time. Um, I, you know, and I'm still, you know, I'm not trying to optimize growth scale, like how many customers, and I'm still in the testing it out phase with with a small group of people. Uh, you know, for instance, I just started two weeks ago actually recording my calls as Google Hangouts. We were talking before we started about uh, recording calls like this when I help startups. Mm -hmm. And uh, you know, this is a classic example of customers had told me, "Hey, why don't you record the calls? Why don't you record the calls?" And I kept, I was like, "Yeah, yeah, I'll get to that someday." And then I tried it once, I'm like, "Oh my God, why didn't I do this before?" It's such a win-win for everyone. Um, yeah. But then it raises whole when you when you when you like when you're doing these things, then it then this sort of raises like larger questions about well, what is the product and what service? If this is a really important emerging need, then what? What is the value proposition? Who am I serving, and what do they want to do? And and so then you you know you kind of end up like uh, you know two steps forward, one step back, figuring this stuff out. Yeah, for sure. I it, it does. I guess it does get a little bit kind of tricky in terms of like recording and ownership and stuff like that. But uh, yeah, I mean, I think uh, it, it's been a really good way to sort of just uh, 
discover other people and kind of uh, brings a lot of uh, how you like. I really enjoy the fact that there are other people that are actively able to endorse other people in a way mm-hmm. that seems a lot more meaningful and a lot more um, like reliable than kind of like your standard you know, like, social media cosign yeah. or any sort of, like, LinkedIn recommendations and stuff like right. that. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, that's, yeah. I would, that's another, this is another this surprising thing. I, I, I thought the, you know, the little recommendation, so the, for those of you who are watching, when I help, uh, you know, So Helpful allows me to open up my calendar to entrepreneurs or any, any business in the world. They can grab 30 minutes of time with me and I help them out. And if I'm helpful at the end of it, they can go and leave me a little recommendation. And this was like a little, like the minor little feature on page three when you're thinking about things. And it turns out that's what people like. Like, they like having that page of recommendations for the reasons you said. It's, it's, well, my LinkedIn stuff is five years old, and it's written for HR departments, and it doesn't really talk about what I'm doing now, and it's not really about me. And uh, and so that, and I say, wow, that I didn't know that, right? So I actually, like, customers told me that. So yeah, um, yeah. So going back, I guess, a little bit, uh, you sure. said that you started coding. Uh, I think you said last April or so. Mm-hmm. Yep. How uh, how how much do you think the um, how much of the whole product has been kind of like your coding or a little bit about your coding background? Uh, well, I've been doing it for 33 years. So uh, I started when I was 10 on an Apple IIe, so I'm a little <laughs> older than I look. Um, and uh, But I, I'm, you know, the way I describe it is I'm, you know, I'm a, you know, a, I can hack things together. I'm not a professional developer. So... Um, you know, as, as probably a lot of people realize that I would have worked with some of these modern uh, web frameworks, it, some of the, like the most challenging thing for a lot of this stuff is like is like writing copy and figuring out what's the workflow and what does the customer want on the screen. And so that sort of basic data-driven CRUD web app stuff, you know, is technically simple, but when you're actually building a product, that's the stuff that you really have to think through. So that's the kind of thing that I try to spend my time on. Then I've brought on other freelancers to help me out and do things like, uh, uh, to do a uh, like to do the scheduling interface with Google API. I mean that was a pretty complex engineering undertaking, so I had to bring somebody on to help me. That the design for so helpful. I'm not design. I'm not designers. So that was all Paul Maderos that did that for me. Um, so you know I, you have to sort of sl- you know the the way I've been trying to build this is the the you know, the stuff that's uh, that is like technically easy but requires a lot of understanding about the customer mindset. That's the stuff that I focus on. The stuff that's you know technically harder requires expertise. Then I just hire people to help me through that. Yeah, speaking speaking of hiring uh, like you know outside help and freelancers, how's that uh, experience been for you being uh, out of China? Like, uh, has it been challenging at all? It's well, it's challenging for everyone everywhere. Uh, you know, there's uh, I, it's like everybody who's worked with freelancers. Some of it's worked great. Some of it's been been tough. Um, you know, I'm at the point now where I'm looking. I'm starting to you know lay the you know, bearing, I'm trying to bring on a, a couple of people to help me full time. So, uh, and I woke up the other day. I looked at the numbers and I, I was like, wow, this. This almost looks like a business. <laughs> so it's like I, I've got to actually, I've got to actually, if I'm going to keep growing and, and meet all these demands, I need some people. So, um, so that's what I'm working on now. But it's you know the, the same challenge that every other entrepreneur has, right? You know, it's finding the right kind of people who've got the same shared passion, vision, all that. Yeah, for sure. How's uh, how's China been for kind of a home base for you? I, so I, the way I describe it is I love being in Asia. Uh, China is kind of its own unique uh, unique world here. The best way I describe it is China is another planet. And so most of my work all day long is sitting at, you know, having conversations in English with other people. Uh, so sometimes I also go out, you know, go out to events and stuff and talk with my Chinese friends and I still take Chinese class twice a week. So there's like... You know, I'm living kind of a, a dual world here, but realistically, you know, the the Chinese market is not one that I'm, you know, that I'm particularly interested in going after at least in the next five years. Uh, any uh, any specific reasoning for uh, that kind of timeline? It's uh, it is much much harder for a Westerner to do. Uh, you know, it, it's like doing business in China is just generally very, very hard. I mean, there's a reason why Fortune 500 companies keep crashing on the ground despite throwing, you know, tens of millions of dollars. I mean, China's a very, very competitive space. Culturally, things are different. People have value payment and stuff. So, you know, the, uh, the step one is finding the right Chinese partner because, 
I mean, you know, you can learn the language, but like why people are doing certain things and what the market wants, and I mean, there's a lot of very subtle things in here that I will never understand. Um, it's a humbling yeah. experience coming here. <laughs> yeah, I can imagine. Uh, I'm actually going to uh, Hong Kong next week. Uh, nice. And you know, something that yeah, I'm gonna go visit some of like uh, family and stuff like that. And uh, one of my stops is to sort of explore a little bit about the. Uh, tech startup scene that's in Hong Kong. Uh, it seems like it's something that's slowly sort of uh, bubbling to the surface a bit. So it was. It was actually doing yeah, really it well. Yeah, seems now. like amazing. Yeah, Paul Orlando was had Accelerate HK, which was the first accelerator there. Unfortunately, he just moved back to LA. But uh, before going, I can connect you with him if you want to, you know, get some advice on who to talk to and stuff there. Oh yeah, that that would be super awesome. Actually, I would I would love that. And if, I mean, it's also like Mike Michelini is on So Helpful, and he's in Shenzhen, which is not far away, and he's in Hong Kong a lot. So you should definitely try to touch base with him if you can. Um, oh, yeah, for sure. That is fantastic. See, I think it's one of those uh, serendipitous things that only <laughs> sort of happens through, you know, uh, live chat and, you know, using So Helpful. Yeah, exactly. Is, you know, that's fantastic. Yep. Um, yeah, so I'm really excited about that. But back to sort of how I originally sure. found out about you. Mm -hmm. um, yep. It was it was through uh, I think your blog article in regards to uh, in regards to pricing, which mm -hmm. really caught my attention. I was just like, I completely understand. Like this this blog <laughs> is fantastic, and uh, I decided to sign up for your uh, customer development email course. And yep. you know, right off the top, what what gave you the idea to use uh, to start an email course? I read Nathan Barry's book Authority. Um, so I, I, it's funny. I had been blogging for like five years, and I think I had my my email, you know, like my my email subscribers was like 110. Like it was just never something I put any attention into. And as I started like talking to other people in the industry, what I came to realize was that, um, you know, the, the engagement level on social media is just is really falling. Right? I mean, we just kind of like tune it all out, and Twitter's just a stream of just you know, as in Facebook is nothing but babies, and people just tuned it out. So like that is a marketing channel um, for selling products and building a relationship with people. I think has um, is I think people have become disillusioned, and also blogging. It's just it's just getting so hard to get people to come and see your content, and so that's why I think a lot of people are actually shifting back to newsletters, which is kind of back to the future for me. Because when I first got into this industry in 1998, we were looking at like the ad revenue from emails and people's engagement, and like, oh my gosh, this is amazing! Like it's crushing the web. Uh, you know, why do we have all? Why are we running our mail on this junky little computer in the corner that crashes every night? Let's get a let's let's invest in email. Fifteen years later, you know, <laughs> we're still talking about <laughs> we're back at the square one, and so, you know, I I just think that at some point it's where people it's, it's basically it's where people are, and you know, everyone every couple of years we, someone sings the the death siren siren song of email, and then five years later we're still <laughs> we're still checking it every day and sending it. So, um, I think it's it's for me anyway. It's been the best way to build a dialogue. So the so the the, the the, the course that I built is a drip email course. I use a product called ConvertKit. You can also do it with MailChimp and there's some out there. And it basically allows you to script out a lesson. The reason I decided to do it for myself is that what I found is that after blogging for a number of years, I had uh, you know I had articles all over the place, and so when someone would call me and say, "Hey, where can I get uh, where can I get that uh, article on you know can I how do you can you show me how to do X Y Z?" I would uh, say, "Oh yeah, I wrote that uh, wrote that post uh, back in April. I think it's called X, but I don't really remember. Maybe I didn't write it. So I couldn't remember." everything that I wrote. And so what I realized is people wanted me to walk them through step by step how you go and uh, how you go and do something. Yeah, I th I think uh, I think the way that you've paced out the course is fantastic because I think if you were to present kind of uh, all of it into one concise chunk, it would definitely be a little bit hard to follow, maybe get a little lost, but just the way that it kind of, you know, every couple days you get a brand new, you know, Almost like a mini lecture. It's yeah. it's it's great. Well, thanks. I appreciate it. It's funny. Every everybody consumes information differently. I mean, I have some people tell me, uh, you know, hey, uh, why don't you just write a book? I hate get, you know, I hate when all this crap falls on my inbox. <laughs> so I mean, it's just like it's everybody's like everybody. Some people want to like search around a blog and read stuff. Some people want to get a PDF, and some people are just happy to get the something drip into their inbox. And so you have to meet 
folks in different, you know, I guess you have to meet people in different levels. Yeah, it's, it's, it's kind of surprising because, like, you know, uh, with, with all of the ways that people have to consume information, some people just definitely prefer some more than others, but, you know, for me, as kind of like a digital native, I think you just got yeah. you got to do all of it. You got to do gotta, all of it. Uh, yeah, exactly. So if only there was a, an easy way to push a button, have all the contents convert to all the different mediums, but it doesn't work that way. <laughs> so you got to sit there right. <laughs> Yeah, so speaking of people and like uh, having different tastes and uh, mm -hmm. things like that, um, the stuff that you have, the content that you have in your uh, customer development course, yep. it's, it's very, you know, it's fantastic and it's, you know, very educational. For for content like that, have you, is that something that you ever, you know, do A, B email tests on or is it kind of just like, this is how I, I like I, to present? I should. Like uh, I should have just you know I've got the the, the tyranny you know it, it, I'm, I'm I'm you know with a lot of what I'm doing right now I'm not at the optimization phase I'm still in the discovery phase and so you know it's you know A/B testing is 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 really like, that kind of like optimization and analytics are really valuable when you're trying to go from you know X to X plus one right so we can really just tune things you know. In a perfect world, I'd have all the time to do that. I don't have all the time to do that. So you know, it's it's like, do I do I build this obvious feature that people want and keeps the system from crashing, or do I try and optimize, you know, conversion of my free email course? And so, that's that's where that's what it comes down to. I have a feeling you probably picked the uh, you probably picked the right thing to focus on for that. Yeah, exactly. But I mean, you know, re I, it would be great to have more data on this stuff. Um, but I think, you know, what I've found is that when you're when you're first when you're first starting out on the product stuff, um, is that at least for me, I get more value out of getting somebody on the phone and say, "Hey, why didn't you log in the past three months?" Instead of looking at all the data and it's like, "Oh, well, oh yeah, I forgot about that. Yeah, I forgot. What was your product again?" I mean, it's like I've learned everything I need to know in that one answer. <laughs> than, than if I than if I had spent, you know, you know hours pouring through the database. Yeah, because sometimes you just need to basically get in touch with your user and just listen, you know? Yeah, exactly. I mean, and some people I've talked to them and I was like, so, you know, I noticed like you're using so helpful, but you've only had like two calls in the past like three months. Like, you know, like, what do you think? Are you going to give up on the product? And the guy was like, this guy's turning to paying clients. I'm like, oh, well... <laughs> I guess then it's, you know, it's like, okay, you know, uh, two calls in three months and we're, you know, thousands of dollars worth of work. All right, I get it. Why, for this person, this is really val valuable. Um, so you, you just, there's just no, uh, data is great, and it's great to know what people are doing in your app, and I think that's, that's a slice, but there's nothing beats, at least in the early stages, closer relationships with people that you can ask them and, and tell you. Yeah, for sure. Um, and also, I guess a little bit back on email. We talked a little bit mm -hmm. before. You are using... Uh, customer I/O to I assume you know look at some of the behaviors of your users or stuff like that. Yep. Yeah, I just started... uh, go ahead. Oh no no go ahead. I was just gonna say uh, you know tell tell us what you're doing. Yeah so I mean I guess uh, you know cause if the, maybe some of your audience is familiar with Kathy Sierra but she has this one of these quotes just don't make a better X make a better user of X and so that's that's the mindset I try to get myself into is like what can I do to help entrepreneurs find more customers and build closer relationships with them and like the products and the tools are part of it but a lot of it is just more like a lot of it is just educational like okay so how do you write content that will get people to call you for help um, and you know most people just have a little button on their blog that says contact me office hours whatever it is and it turns out like that stuff doesn't work well at all it works terribly but there are ways you can actually write content that makes the content better and gets people to call you well the only way you can do that is by getting a, you know begin teaching people and getting in relationship with them and so what I really like about customer IO is it allows you to look at the data in your application and see what people are doing and see where they're stuck to figure out, okay, uh, this is where this person needs help. It's like, so for, I'll give you an example. Somebody joins so helpful, they set up their calendar, and the first time a you know a potential customer books a call with them, well, like I can send them an email right away and say, hey, congratulations on your first call. Here's some tips for what you should do. Um, and it's things like you know, like I'm doing like right now. Don't look at the person's picture on the screen. Look into the microphone because as your audience is seeing this, they're seeing me looking at them. Otherwise, I'm you know I could do it like this, but yeah, you know, this is not as easy for people to watch right now because I'm looking at your picture. So things like that, you you know, you like people. How did I figure that out? Trial and error, right? You know, so you can. That's the kind of things you can do. And I what I've realized is that um, pe people will only get value from your product if your product helps them 
go and do something better. And, and unless you happen to be the Airbnb or the Uber or one of these, you know, knock it out of the part, mass, you know, things that tap into a mass of new consumer trends, for the rest of us mortals, it's about helping what job are they trying to do and what tools and, and content can you give them to help them do that job. And so that's why I like uh, Customer.io. Yes, you know what, I think that's amazing advice, especially in kind of like the startup landscape where uh, it's, uh, it's, a lot of, uh, it's a lot of home runs, but not a lot of focus on, you know, advice for uh, grinding through the day-to-day -day and customer <laughs> development and product development. <laughs> and yeah. I, think it's, I think that was fantastic, yeah. I, yeah, my advice, people, is like uh, plan for 20 years, right? If you plan for 20 years, you won't get frustrated after the first two because it just takes... <laughs> Anybody I know who's done this stuff, the, the, you know, the, the Instagrams are so rare. And even those guys, when you actually look at the real story, there was you know, sort of a lot of hard work and totally hunt. But realistically, anybody that's been successful at this, it just takes a very, very long time. And they figure out a way to keep going. Yeah, uh, so. I remember, I think it was it's Kevin Systrom that was from uh, Instagram. And yep. I think he, he was talking about the original product, which I think was called Bourbon. And it was basically mm -hmm. like, a four square clone that happened to allow photos with filters and then it turns out oh people don't care about anything they just want their photos with filters exactly I mean and I went through that same thing with so help my original idea for so helpful was it was I called it help 20 me it was gonna be like a marketplace where people could like give you know find each other and give each other advice which sounds oh my god it's a great idea right would it be awesome we can all go to a place where we can give each other help, uh, and you know maybe you know maybe the you know the person who gets the help pays a few dollars. Well, if you actually go out and do the customer development, find out people don't want that at all, right? Like there is no people have been trying that for 15 years, and like the expert expert networks, they just people don't grab on. And it turns out it's really really hard to get people to call you and ask you for help, because um, that's what you know that's what service providers are trying to do all day long, right? <laughs> they call it marketing, you know, like call me free consultation, you know, if you want customers to call you for help you got to work hard to earn their trust uh, and so that's the kind of thing you you realize when you're in the real world um, so you can figure that out at the very beginning or later on so anyway so we got a few yeah, minutes left honestly minutes I, left. go ahead oh I was gonna say uh, yeah I was just gonna give a big shout out to your blog I think uh, I think the amount of personality that you injected into it and into the content just really makes it feel um, you know, it, it was, it would be, if your website was a little bit different, like, you know, other websites online, uh, you know, maybe this call wouldn't have, taught, wouldn't have happened, but I think, you know, just the way that it's laid out, it's, it was very personable and, you know, yeah. it connected me to you in a very, uh, awesome way through your startup, so, yeah. Thanks, I appreciate that. Yes, yeah, it's, it's, uh, so the, the uh, you know, sort of like kind of maybe end on a, you know, a sort of wrap on a note that maybe ties some of this together. So what, what are the, the larger framework that I'm thinking about for like Kevin's 20-year project is a concept I call helpful marketing. And it's basically what can I, you know, the, the, idea, the basic idea is like, um, how do I get people to find me? You know, so we had the the mass marketing, the Don Draper era that existed for you know for the beginning of Madison Avenue. Then you know the 1990s we got into permission marketing, Seth Go, and you got to get you know with Google AdWords and getting people's emails, giving permission. But the problem is now people are like saturated with giving their permission, right? Like they've given their permission, they still tune it out. They don't read their emails. So what can you do to get customer to find you? Read your emails first. And the way I'm finding that works best for me and some other entrepreneurs is you prove to them that you can help them solve problems. And that comes in the from your writing and your content. When you write, you write basically solutions to problems that you help people solve. It comes through products like Customer I.O. so that if you have a product, you're helping them solve their problems with the product. And it comes through calls like this, sort of one-on-one. -on -one. It's like, I'm here to help you. Like if you're a customer, I don't care. If you're an entrepreneur, I don't care if you want me to spend 30 minutes helping you spell entrepreneur, right? I don't care how to solve your problems. I want to prove to you that I can help you solve problems. And when you start when you start shifting your mind to doing that, suddenly marketing is not about finding customers. It's like how do I get ways to help them find me? That's what I'm calling helpful marketing. Um, so and that's that's the more exciting frontier right me for me right now than than the product itself. You know what? That sounds a, that sounds fantastic and an extremely exciting uh, frontier for you. And uh, I just want to say thank you so much for your time yeah, and taking this call. And uh, best of luck with everything. 
thanks, Jonathan. Please let me do what I, you know, if I can ever help you. This was sort of all about me in an interview, but if I can ever help you out with anything, please let me know. If you if you come into Hong Kong and you want some introductions, I'm happy to do that. Or if you just want to follow up with an email about how customer I always doing or ConvertKit or my blog or, you know, I'm happy to follow up with any of this stuff and sort of help you out. Yeah, that would be fantastic. Kevin, thank you so much. Have a great day. Thanks a lot. You too. Enjoy your trip. All right. Take it easy. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.